bed very soon. All right? Now I'm making my way down the platform, and this PSO clocks me coming down the platform. Now for anyone who's not aware, a PSO, uh, they're called Protective Service Officers, and basically they are guys who failed the police exam. <laughs> and then they said, hey, do you want to be a ticket inspector? You can cosplay as a cop and we'll give you a gun. I see you've had problems with them before. <laughs> Alright, no. But, so, you know, no problems for abuse there. No, no problems for power or anything. And, uh, our PSO clocks me, come down the platform, says, you're drunk. To which I answer, no shit. Alright? So, you can see, I started it. I'm aware. Now, he goes, you're drunk. You shouldn't have been on the train. Yeah, why were you on the train? You should have taken a taxi home. At which point, we enter in a, phil a philosophical debate about the nature of public transport, uh, what its service is, and the fact that if I'm not supposed to be on the train while drunk, why does his job exist? <laughs> he does not like that answer. I don't think he was expecting so much philosophical pushback uh, at 12 o'clock on a Tuesday. Which is fair. Uh, welcome to the Weird News Quiz. Hello, my name is Matt Harvey. I'm the host of the quiz and I will be delivering you four times your recommended dosage of the news. For anyone who hasn't listened before, I have collected some of the weirdest little stories from, uh, from recent news and bundled them together for you to make fun of. And uh, if I happen to sneak in a little bit of promotion for my or my wonderful guests' upcoming or future shows, well, can't really blame us for that. What's the harm? Uh, thanks for joining us. Despite not really knowing what it is that you're about to watch, I have two guests here who are also unsure, unsure what they have signed up for, and I will introduce them. So, uh, first we have comedian, father, and man scrolling the Robin Hood app, looking for ways to invest his new pay rise of $3.57 a day. Oh, bargain. It's Michael Connell. Hey. How you doing, thanks Michael? Thanks for having me on the show. What was that? Sorry. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm... Interested to see what this is. <laughs> aren't, we all, aren't we all? And opposing him today will be a comedian and social commentator and banned news outlet desperately trying to shill his underdeveloped app. It's Daniel Muggleton. Thank you so much. Please, please buy the app. It's good. It's a, it's a winner, I reckon. Yeah, it's all. That's every, like I downloaded the ABC's app after, uh, after Facebook took everything down, right? But mm. even then, even when I'm looking through the app, it's like, hey, have you downloaded our app? <laughs> it's just desperately trying to get people off Facebook and into, into their own app, which I'm yeah. sure they're, they're so thoroughly not prepared for. Uh, but I guess uh, let's uh, stop messing about. And uh, we'll get into questions. We'll start off nice and simple. Got some easy questions for you guys. Something a little light, something a little fun. Something very Australian. The platypus. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a creature so weird that when it was first discovered in the 19th century, many scientists in Europe thought it was actually fake and uh, tried the, I think when it was sent back by uh, George Shaw, the, the guy who received it, he was, went digging through the corpse to look for the stitches to see mm. where they had stuck it together to see what it was made out of. But scientists have recently released a a, a study in the scientific journal Nature after they completed the first map of the platypus genome because you know lockdown's been long and boring for everybody and uh, we all need some new hobbies so what new things have we learnt about the platypus from this genome release 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 they're old hoax they're finally admitting <laughs> look the stitches were there yeah <laughs> this, this yeah. Long yeah, yeah. they're like this is why you've never seen one in the wild like we've been really hanging on to this lie oh by the way australia doesn't exist the earth is flat but especially this platypus thing <laughs> it's an issue i do love I mean, the australia doesn't exist rumor like that mm. idea that flat earthers have floated because it you know it just it shows the support for the arts that i don't think anybody has the yeah. is that we're all actors. Yeah, employed actors in Australia. I'm not buying it. Yeah, you no, know, no, I don't no. think that's possible. Like, who? Which country has an arts budget that big that they can employ 24 million people just to walk around and say, 
Yeah, I live in Australia. Totally. Mm. Invent a new accent. That's why no, you know, the American actors can't do it because no, they can't find a native speech speaker to teach them. <laughs> yeah. Have you, uh, the, I would argue Pitch Perfect John Lithgow's Australian accent is probably the most racist thing I've ever witnessed in my life. Oh, really? And I live in Australia, so I've seen some racism. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's next level how wild that thing is. I haven't watched Pitch Perfect, so I don't actually know. I'm going to have to check it out after this. If I, I thought you were from Melbourne. If you haven't watched Pitch Perfect after nine months of lockdown, I don't think you're going to catch on to the franchise, you know? I just think it's over for you. I'm late to the game, yeah. Yeah. but So we're, we're guessing what they discovered about the platypus with this new genome sequencing. All right. thing about... I know they've got a super toxic spur. Yeah, they've got toxic spurs, yes. Um, the males have... Toxic spurs on their, uh, it's like on their, I guess it's, I, what would be the equivalent of the elbow, I guess, it's, they sort of stick out, and they're quite mm-hmm. uh, venomous, uh, but that's not what they discovered recently, they discovered, uh, I'll give you the answer, I'll, I'll put you out of misery, that the platypus is actually part bird, part reptile, and part mammal. Oh. So yeah. Michael was right, like, it is stitched together, it yeah. is three type of animals stitched oh. together, what they discovered is, yeah, it was bang on. Uh, the initial skepticism. I think, do you get a point for that? I would, if I was a, the judge, I would be like, Michael was in fact correct. I don't yeah, know. It's close enough to any real answer that I've ever had on this show that I'm happy to give him a point. Um, <laughs> Botanists are pulling off this hoax or God is or whatever. <laughs> whatever you <laughs> yeah. in, someone's mucking around. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, they say that the, the platypus' most common ancestor goes back far enough that it was before those, uh, those like subspecies all sort of differentiated from each other. So it's got characteristics of all of them. It's them and the, uh, the echidna at the moment. They're the only ones left of a species called the monotreme. And the monotreme has a lot of like odd little characteristics about it, including having a cloaca, which is uh, like birds have cloacas and some lizards have cloacas, which is the single hole for the pee and the poo and uh, reproduction. Uh huh. Yeah. So they've got they've got one hole. One hole, the one ring. Sure it all. Yeah. <laughs> all you need. Good on them for being efficient. I'm glad over millions of years of evolution, we've evolved a second hole. That's yeah. our big evolutionary achievement as a species. That and thumb. Remember back when they had one hole? Oh, yeah. Now we've got two holes. Who's <laughs> got two holes, two thumbs? Yeah. <laughs> This guy. Yeah. This guy. And doesn't give a crap or a piss out of the same hole. That would be this guy. Yeah, disgusting. Um, there's, a, there's a few odd characteristics. We've named the venomous spurs. Do you, mm-hmm. any of you know, either of you know, any of the odd characteristics of a platypus? I've got uh, a- it, it, eggs, but they have live yeah. young. Yep, eggs. Eggs and uh, live young. Despite being mammalian, they, they lay eggs. So I think I can like, give you a point. I'll give you two points for the two things you've said so far. So you're, you're killing this game. Oh. Wait, like eggs Eggs was a point? Well, I mean, if you can name one of the characteristics. I mean, I thought every motherfucker knew eggs. I thought you were going crazy. Okay. It's just like they actually vote one nation. Like I thought you wanted real <laughs> weird facts, you they know? They are very Australian, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so. they bloody love it. They got one whole, one nation. That's their dream. That's, right. That's what they're after. Right. United. Under one. Um, mm. All right, let, let's go for some of these. So they've got... Um, Water? Look, I got a point for the eggs. I'm going to double down. <laughs> all right. No, I'll, I'll. <laughs> they've got Water? a duck bill. Water? A duck's bill? A duck's bill. Uh, beaver tail. Else? They're Australian. Uh, not really. They're fake. They're pretending yeah. to be Australian. They pretend They're pretending to be actually... part of the arts budget. It's actually yeah. the dog from Frasier who's had horrible plastic surgery and got a bill attached. Uh, it's an out-of-work dog actor. <laughs> mm. Yeah, they tape uh, two dogs together for every what platform. What flavor is rainbow? What was that? <laughs> you buy the platypus paddle pop, it's rainbow flavor. That's the one. <laughs> oh, is that a bill of bong? Shit, I'm wrong. Bill yeah, of bong. Yeah, you've, you've wasted a perfect what? opportunity there. Ah, uh, all the Can points. I... 
Can I get something for knowing that the rainbow paddle pop is in fact caramel flavored? Yeah. Come yeah. on, give me something. Give me yeah, some I'll action there. I'll give you a, a half point action for that. Why not? Half I point? Yeah, I don't half do point. decimal points, yeah, brother. You round it up. You round it up to one. If you had like, I don't know, they are, or something to, like that. they are related to echidnas. They are, yeah. So echidnas have a tri-headed penis. Do they? <laughs> going on you know down there. Okay, I know. Every Australian wild. animal has something yeah. really weird about it. Like, you know, wombats have the square poo, yeah. and um, kangaroos, male kangaroos have two penises, and females have three vaginas. And, uh, wow. what else? What else? You just can't satisfy a female kangaroo, huh? <laughs> no, it's it's just so hard. Well, you're not even equipped properly. It's just I know. you're coming in here and you're like swinging two dicks around. And she's like, well, yeah. she's still got this other hole here. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael's gone. I, 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 I remember, I'm trying to remember what else I know about platypus. They have electromagnetic, like this sensor. They have like yeah, an electromagnetic. Yeah, absolutely, they do. Yeah. They, um, their, their bill is so sensitive. And it, it sort of like senses electromagnetism and it can use it that to hunt for small creatures. Because when it's in the water, it like closes its eyes and obviously it can't hear because it's in the water. So it uses its and build. Ad adamantium to... claws, right? A healing <laughs> factor that comes out. They can... I got, look, this, cool. this, these facts aren't true. This is just a big hoax on Daniel. Where it just... <laughs> I was we'll be at a dinner party and be like, they'll have electromagnetic bells. And be like, what a dickhead. <laughs> like, I really, if the electromagnetic bell thing was a lie, I was hook, line, and sinker. I was like, these fucking magneto lizard birds. Good on them. Like, what an animal. You yeah, know? they've got so much going on. With the, as far as like the, the claw thing go, you're surprisingly close. Because they do have <laughs> claws to dig, but they don't, like a cat will pop its claws out but a platypus actually retracts its webbing so that when it's not in the water, it can actually walk a bit faster. So when it's That's in the water, so it's in the, water yeah, the webbing pops out. So you're kind of close it. on the claws thing. Just they can retract. They Is can that retract the webbing. How many points have I got here? Have I just won the game? <laughs> just, I don't know. Just the you may be the highest scoring player ever just because you knew a couple of platypus facts. Yeah. Hey, coming in. Are we... Are we ready to like move on from retract the webbing just yet? That is one of the grosser images. It makes me think of a Tasmanian's foot. I'm not into it. <laughs> really good swimmers though. Like they would yeah. swim to Ian Thorpe. Um, mm. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's get a few. They've got fluorescent fur. So it's like bioluminescent. Right. Um, they, because they, so they, their species evolved. So they do produce milk, right? But because their species' most common ancestor is so far back, they don't actually have nipples. They hadn't evolved nipples yet. <laughs> so the way that they secrete milk is that it sweats out of them. And their babies, like, lick up the milk from the mother's fur. Yeah, they're bizarre. They're really weird creatures. There's so You're many... Out of the <laughs> they're born with little baby teeth, which they lose when they get older. And then they ha just have, like, no teeth. Uh, and they, you know, swallow gravel to help chew up food. But don't actually have a stomach. They just have a gullet, like a fish. So it just, like, goes straight in and straight into the intestines. <laughs> There's more. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, and um, the last two things, last two things before, because I don't want to get hung up on this for too long, is that uh, our scientists discovered recently that platypus venom contains a hormone that could aid in diabetes treatment because it, uh, what does it do? It, pr it pr promotes insulin release more than the same, uh, the same hormone in humans. And they also discovered that they have a, their milk has a unique antibacterial property which could help with superbugs. Like when we get to the point of antibiotics being no good, we'll be drinking platypus milk in order to survive. I don't know if I want to drink sweat milk. You know, I think I draw the line at almond milk. That's probably as far down the milk food chain as I want to go. <laughs> what have we got? Almond milk, coconut milk, sweat milk. Like, I don't see 
how these are so different to you. Like, uh, it just means to become a, um, a medical superpower at some point. With all like, the sweet platypus milk. Yeah, that's, all, all that sweat platypus milk, I guess. Uh, yeah. We've established it's like part cat, part dog, part bird. Oh, was it cat? Reptile, reptile. mammal, Rep and bird. Basically, you could coaster. play... Super not kosher. World's <laughs> <laughs> least kosher milk discovered. <laughs> I was I was gonna say a platypus could play any character in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Isn't that weird? <laughs> but it loves it. It's having a good time. It's it's an amazing creature, and there's just so many weird, odd little bits and pieces that have been discovered, like previously, but also because of this genome breakdown. So I'm just, you know, I feel like it's time to invest in a uh, in a platypus farm, and uh, <laughs> the future is platypus. It's fine. We've got this. We got right. it. Um, something a little simpler. So an eight-year-old from Minneapolis, he recently pointed out a problem with NPR's oldest news program, All Things Considered. What was the kid's concern? It's super boring. Too boring. That's <laughs> kind of like you're heading in the right direction. Ah, that it's on the radio. <laughs> is that a big part of the issue? Well, There's mum was Hmm? You have to say that again, sorry. There's no images with this news. There's no video. <laughs> There's no video. There's no yeah. angry racism in this video. It's just it's just words, and that's boring. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say, like, potentially not enough. What's his name? Tucker Carlson? I like, I like my news delivered that way. If you're not watching Fox News, what are you even doing out there? It's awesome. <laughs> It's such a crazy way to view everything. You're like, wow, this is so much more entertaining than The Guardian that makes me feel bad. You know? <laughs> yeah, not enough bow tie clad, uh, just angry opinions yeah, on it. Yeah, it. more of that. <laughs> Build it up. Um, it? No, he's, he's eight years old, so like that, I feel like that's very that significant. Yeah, he's an eight year old kid. I feel okay. like that's a significant clue to what he might be concerned about. What I, I think Michael again. It was boring. Like, I think Michael is slamming this fucking game. It's a slam dunk. Everything this kid, the kid says, is a fucking win. <laughs> I don't even know. Jordan of this game. Yeah. <laughs> Putting <laughs> shots up like Bugs <laughs> Bunny. <laughs> my wheelhouse, like platypus, NPR. Yeah. <laughs> We're listening to We're in your yeah. wheelhouse. All oh. platypus is considered. <laughs> yeah. Ready to go. Uh, no, he explained that there was not enough dinosaur stories. Aha. Uh -huh. So we're not really we're not far off with the boring. He was just like, it's fine, but you need to talk about dinosaurs more. And he like wrote them, a, I assume, an email. And it comes right. that there wasn't enough. So what you're saying is this eight-year-old kid is a fucking virgin if he's still interested in dinosaurs. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's, ugh, Loser. come on. Yeah, jeez, brother. Slam like, it. Jurassic Park was good in like what the nineties. You weren't even alive, kid. Grow up. They're not even real. He's hung up on Ian Malcolm, or he really hates lawyers, and just enjoyed that mm. one scene where the T Rex just smashes into the lawyer. I feel like that was kind of what he must have been going for. He he, he slammed the program though, because mm. he was like. Um, it shouldn't be called All Things Considered. It just should be called Newsy Things Considered. Which I think is a great I mean, He's got a point. Some things considered. Brackets, not including dinosaurs. <laughs> no dinosaurs considered. Move on. Yeah. Very literal kid. Never show him the uh, never-ending story. Like... <laughs> Well, if you show it to him, fucking put it on repeat. You know what I mean? Like, let's yeah. just let's just whip this thing around. Yeah. Otherwise, he can be upset. Continuous, different story. It's just the same story over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're all about. You're right. You don't know any different. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys familiar with Jacob Rees-Mogg? Yes. He lies yeah. down in Parliament. He does, yeah. So many photos they, of him just... Uh, Taken, not even taking a nap, just laying. 
Yeah, yeah, that's, it's yeah, real that's weird. It looks like it looks like a, a a Roman next to a bowl of grapes. That's his move in the parliament. It's very yeah. odd. I feel like he's a, a ghost of a Victorian who just that's where he mm. worked, and so he haunts there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, just kind of down, just like looking at the person. I don't mind it, to be honest. I don't mind a bit of a relaxed vibe in the old yeah. parliament. In, you want a bit more of that, a bit less, uh, yeah. a bit less sitting up straight. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's come out with a claim after Brexit. He says uh, that something has happened to the fish in the UK. What, what does Jacob Rees-Mogg think happened to the fish in the UK after Brexit? Uh, they've been cooked in a flavourless fashion. Is that it? I feel very like bland could, fish. I feel like you'd find that as a point of pride. He's very British. He would mm. just be like, we didn't use too many flavours. Yeah. Just a good old British fish. Yeah. Batter it, put salt on it, then put salt on it again, you fucking coward. <laughs> Get the double salt. Um, I mean, I lived there for two years. I feel comfortable making fun of them. Yeah. Um, so... British fish. He's complained British. about the like they're gotten like they're getting fished by the EU. Like he was a big EU guy. He was like hating on the EU. Very and they've angry. just done that agreement and the fishing territories and licenses were an issue. Mm. So mm. It's something like that. They're only only the mini fish. These goddamn Norwegians taking all that sweet cod. Is um, that no, no. it? He I mean it is a way of expressing his anti EU sentiment, but it's more positive. It's a much more positive Note. Well, no, well, please. Which is rare for, for Reese Mock. Brussels no longer has control of the fishing, and now the fish just do whatever they want. It's anarchy in the ocean. <laughs> anarchy in the fish. Yes. Mm. Big Brussels did not has lost see control. This when Brexit went through, yeah. <laughs> control of fish would return to the crown. I don't know. Yeah, the fish. The fish have now gone in favour of a hierarchical class system with zero mobility. <laughs> it's like yeah. this is this is how it should be. Now you're you're hitting more of a, a Reese Mogg vibe. I feel like that would definitely be something <laughs> he would probably uh, claim. Um, now he I, said the fish are happier after Brexit, better and happier. Fucking happier. Yeah. Happier about yeah. a fish. Yep. The most emotionless creature of all. Even during Finding Nemo, I didn't really know how <laughs> Nemo felt about being lost, such as the blank, emotionless fish face that they all have. Yeah, the dead, dark eyes <sighs> of the fish. Just the tiny yeah. part that hasn't got any fear in it. Yeah. Man. You're happier. Happier. Better and happier. You would have, you would have, when did you live in the UK, Daniel? Uh, the uh, 2017 through 2019, okay, I just so got back here. Ju I, I flew into the bushfires yeah. and then they cleared up and I, I picked a great spot for the old pandemic. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So were you around, you, you would have been in the UK pre-Brexit? Yeah. No, no, no. During. During. I was there. I, I remember I went to Edinburgh, I think it was 2016 or 2017, just after the vote, because it tanked the currency. So I got really cheap accommodation that year. And then I was there for the two years of discussion. And then as I left, Brexit was supposed to have occurred, like I think it was like January 1st or whatever, or some date in January after I left in December 2019. It was like two to three years of discussion. It was fucking ages like it was so long and like nothing was achieved and they discussed it again and like everything's pretty much the same i think as far oh, as yeah. i know yeah i mean they've they've pushed yeah, through it like a, a do, you do you see them pre-brexit i was gonna ask today like were they stressing out with all the regulations red tape or losing hair gray Look. I didn't. I didn't want to. I didn't want to take this show to a dark place after the uplifting platypus facts. But uh, I can recall on numerous occasions watching British fish pen sad ballads, just very upset fish. Some even committing suicide by jumping into the water, supposedly to drown themselves. It was a uh, very. It was very sad times for the Brit. Like one time, I got fish and chips. And the fish rearranged the chips to spell out "kill me." 
You know what I mean? It was rough over there for the old British fish. Another cool. question. Uh, last animal question, and then we'll move on from animals. So a Melbourne man armed with a gun is on the run after he stormed what building? It's an animal-related question. Zoo? Zoo. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll go, I'll go aquarium just to be difficult. <laughs> to cheer I, those fish up. <laughs> yeah. He wanted Australia fish to be as happy as, uh, as Brexit fish. <laughs> he mm. went in there to check on them. Uh, no, he stormed an animal shelter. And, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a really weird... He was like dressed in full army fatigues and he stormed the animal shelter. But when he went in there... So he was, the police said he was dressed in... Tactical style camouflage clothing, wearing a mask and a helmet, and he walked into the shelter and demanded to know what. He had a very specific question of the person at the counter. What did he want to know? Um, can dogs still see me despite them being colorblind? <laughs> if I dress like Do the fatigue still work effectively? Confusing the front stuff for Wikipedia or for Google. Mm. One question. Yeah, one question. Is is camouflage still in? Have I missed the boat? Is it no longer a good look? He's very late on the camouflage. That was mm. what, like 2000s? It was huge in the 2000s. Dude, Ali, Ali G era, that's all I know. Mm. Around there. It was hot. What do you reckon, Michael? You, you seem deep in thought. I don't know. How do I adopt a pet? <laughs> Just a real... <laughs> He's like, I mean, I'm so prepared. I'm so prepared for this dog. Look how much gear I've gotten. Whatever it takes, you know. Uh, no, he, he he went in demanding to know where the cats are. And that yeah. was all he wanted to know. He was like, he stormed in, demanding to know where the cats were. Then he left without taking any cats. He just wanted to check on them. I feel like there was some sort of QAnon Pizzagate cat thing that we missed and this guy got caught up in it or maybe he was looking to start one I don't know because this feels like a really specific thing to do mm-hmm. with it seemingly I thought it was going to like a animal liberation he's going to let all the animals out sort of story it sounded like it was going to go in that direction until he didn't until he just That's... didn't rescue any cats so like Army fatigues. Mm-hmm. Helmet. Gun. Tell me where the cats are. Yep. They're like, over there. And he's like, okay. And just bounced. Is it that... Just, is like that he, he probably went and had a look and then just what? left. Did he pet one? We have to assume he did. There's no report. It's not in the official report. But uh, I'm going to editorialize and say he did. Probably stuck his oh. finger in. Maybe he got bit. Maybe that's why he left. Cats. But it was a natural oh, empath of cats. Babe. If he did storm the the shelter trying mm-hmm. to liberate the cats, like, I'm here to save you, cats would be like, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> cats were like, yeah, okay. Cool. Well, if you're not going to appreciate it, <laughs> I came in with a gun and fatigues and everything. Fine. No oh, more red. Surplus store. Guns aren't even legal in this country. I went and got one. Do, do, you, do you think maybe... He was like, he'd heard about these like cinema shootings in America and was like, I want to shoot anyone who sees the movie Cats <laughs> and fell down with his initial, like, he's like, which way to Cats? And he's like, they're actual Cats. And he's like, ah, oh, damn. And then just kind of accepted his fate, you know? Well, I've, I've thought for years that the the strongest approach to gun control in America is probably to shoot up a zoo because people don't care if people get hurt but people care if animals get hurt yeah 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 so if you shut up a zoo there would be a stronger response they wouldn't be like well give the giraffes a bulletproof backpack and send them on their way like there there would be genuine real outcries of being upset yeah like Harambe. I know that name, but I don't know the name of anyone who's died in a mass shooting in America. See? Like, not one. See? This is exactly what I'm talking about. One gorilla goes down. I'm like, okay, 
Commit that to memory. One, yeah, Isn't one gorilla it? goes down like four years ago when you were living in the UK dealing with all your sad Brexit mm. fish. It was about then. Yeah. Then. So you had other things to deal with. Interesting theory. But this man, what did he get arrested for? Cause well, like, he's on, it's he's on the run. Robbery. Well, I assume by now he's been arrested, but he was on the run. It was, you know, brandishing a gun, threatening, you know, yeah. all that sort of stuff. So it would be... I was, just, I was just wondering how you classify that crime. Because like, it wasn't like an attempted robbery. Like He didn't attempt to rob them. Yeah. Like, attempted attempted. Yes. Attempted. <laughs> Armed attempted cat adoption. Cat. I, yeah, I mean, I think all men who really like cats should be punished. That's just my theory. Like, I don't know if any of you have cats. I don't know you well enough, but I do stand by it. Like anyone, I, look, any dude who I loves will. a cat, I've, I've got an issue. I would be more comfortable around a man in fatigues with a gun than a man being like, pet it. It's the best cat. It's number one. I'd be like, no, thanks. Look, I'm a, I'm a confessional here. Yeah, I'm a big cat person. We had cats a lot when I was growing up. And I'm okay with your stance because it's common for people to be like fuck people who like cats uh but what is hate, what is the impotence behind your frustration for specifically for men who like cats because it just it doesn't it just it weirds me out i don't like it it's like it's like anyone who says they're friends with their mom that one's male or female not gender specific but yeah. i don't like it you're not no, friends that, that's fair don't i can i can get behind that i can join you on that end of the spectrum but i feel like i drop off like you, I lose you in the thing. philosophical alignment along the way so yeah I'm, I mean, look, I'm not i'm not i'm not here to gather a following <laughs> i'm just here to let people know who feel like i do that other people share those feelings you and maybe like we should get together yeah. in fatigues and change the world my family has a cat and it's grown on me but I don't know if I can say love is a thing. What do you sell us on it, Matt? What what's great about a cat? Um, so every day is that as far as pets go, when when we were growing up, they to they were always very friendly to me. I I found that they were um, so I would often wake up and one. One or both of the cats would have made its way to laying down next to me or near me. Um, they're very independent creatures, and they don't require too much fuss, but they still have a little bit of that empathy in them. So if, if you're upset, they'll still come up in the same way that a dog will and mm. sit with you, but they just sort of don't require as much work. I mean, they are, in this country, as it's been proven to show over many years, they're quite dangerous to have if you, because they kill a lot of local wildlife. Mm. Uh, so that has become, like, I don't have a cat now, but that has become a problem uh, increasingly over, over time. So I, I, can, I can understand people's hesitation. I'm, I'm not I, saying I, they're the greatest ever, I just enjoy them. I think I've realized what my problem with cat dudes is. Yeah, okay. it's just that like cats are kind of independent they just kind of hang out in your house whereas dogs like need you every step of the way and i i love that attention right and i love that outward showing of love and any man who, who doesn't need that i'm suspicious of <laughs> i'm like i don't know about this i well, think i don't what, what are you hiding you know what i mean this is weird i don't need eyes on me all the time it's fine i walk yeah. around with a shovel whenever i want don't don't judge me it's fine then this is why I'm suspicious. I'm like, why? How can you get by like that? What have you got? Indoor plants too? I'm freaking out. I don't like this. <laughs> well, you know, now I have to have indoor plants if I've got an indoor cat. Cat's got to go somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Alice Frazier has a theory about people who like cats. Her theory is that people uh, think of cats the way they think of themselves. So the, the positive qualities that they put on cats are what they think are the positive mm. qualities of themselves, which I think is probably accurate. Mm. My wife is always looking at the cat and she goes, oh, he's sad or he's happy. It's the exact same face. He doesn't have, <laughs> it's not, there's not muscles in the face. He's not like a human. He mm. has the same cat face 24-7. Yeah. So he's like a British fish or Jonathan Rhys-Mogg. The exact same <laughs> face the whole time. Blank always. That's right. Mm. 
Oh, All right. Um, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a question for you guys. So, an Oklahoma mm. State representative has filed a bill to establish a hunting season for what creature? Oklahoma? Yeah, Oklahoma. I'm going to go follow on. Cat. Cat. I think it's themed. I think it's a themed round. I think you put a lot of effort into constructing this quiz. So I'm going cat. Platypus. Platypus. (laughs) That is an elaborate hunt. So you're giving them the right to fly to a country that doesn't exist to hunt a, at this point, mythical beast. It has, has, I think, more qualities than like a chimera at this point. The... uh, (laughs) Maybe because it's Oklahoma. He's, he just wants the brownie points among hunters. He's going for the hunter boat. He's like, look, I'm legalizing hunting platypus, uh, giraffe, uh, <laughs> boa constrictor, whatever, you know, so many animals. It's, whatever you want, guys. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's that... permits out now. I like, I like snakes. Can we, go, can we stay in the avenue of snakes? I got a good snake hunt. I like that. I'm liking that from Michael. I'm on. Yeah, fuck yeah. Hunt a, how do you hunt a snake? Yeah, well, I mean, when I get big enough, there, I, I guess, uh, I don't know how fast a, a bow constrictor moves, but I guess it has to have a certain amount of muscular like, leap to be able to catch something to squeeze it. Unless it's mm. a sneaking predator, unless it's purely built on sneaking. Yeah. But what, this, what, is the, what is the answer? This is what yeah, I want to know. Has created well. He's put out a bill to create a hunting season for Bigfoot. Ah, oh. probably more likely to catch a platypus, to be honest. Yeah, or a bulk constrictor in Oklahoma. But like a hunting season, like is in you can't be hunting Bigfoot all year round. No, 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 no. Control. That's crazy. Yeah, that'd be okay. insane to be like just going out there anytime. You, you like there's a you know from. Whatever it is, November you know, to December. In, in summer, their numbers get too high, and you need to cull. Mm. <laughs> just really, yeah, take the numbers down a bit. So they're like kangaroos at that point; they're just a pest. You just yeah. I I like to think it's very heavily regulated. It's like with fish; like you have to get it, then you get the foot, and you measure the foot, and if the foot's under a certain length, then it's not a big foot, so you have to throw it back. You know. Well, I'm I'm gonna give you a point for that because the hunting season is not actually for killing it is a catch and release hunting oh yeah. you better, better <laughs> kiss them and throw them over the side you do. Sort of no, actually that is written into the rule is that you must say <laughs> you, <laughs> you have to throw them as you throw it back <laughs> it has to be into the ocean like it has to be like a fish you have to transport it to the ocean then throw the big foot in being like i returned you i'm an ethical hunter <laughs> It's kind of a funny story, mm. but um, if if they made the hunting Bigfoot hunting season like you know May to September or whatever, how worried would you be if you were a kind of hairy homeless guy? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be sweating all season. <laughs> Just like going into athlete's foot and they measure you up. And he's like, you're a size 15. And he's like, no, 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 11, 11. Come on. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, hunting it season. What are you guys, crazy? You're going to kill me out there. <laughs> well, um, given that he's introducing the season, do you, th- do you think that he claims that he's actually seen Bigfoot? Do you think he's on the record as having said that he has? Uh, being a politician, I'm guessing he's like, Sitting on the fence about it. <laughs> but it's okay, maybe there may not be. It may or may not be Bigfoot, but I'm a problem solver. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out for this community. Uh, it's probably his jam. I've I've got I've got an alternative theory. Mm-hmm. I think uh, he in fact has no interest in Bigfoot. That's why he's done the old catch and release program. I just think he's planning to stalk. A constituent, so he needs an excuse. Really tall, hairy constituent rolling around, being like, "What are you doing late at night, following that van?" It's like I thought Bigfoot might be in the van. I don't know. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Sorry, officer. It is Bigfoot hunting season, and like, yeah, she's got a husband, but she loves me. You know what I mean? Like, I, I talked to my cat about it last night. It agrees. Like, I think, I think I got a chance with this lady. I mean, Bigfoot. 
<laughs> well, yeah, he, he actually has, uh, he says, this is a quote from he said, I've been into the woods all my life, and I've never seen any sign of Bigfoot. But... Open and shut case. Yeah. But he says, uh, some people have, you know, some people have claimed to have seen Bigfoot, some people claim not to have seen Bigfoot, so I guess he's just, he, you, you're both sort of sitting there, he's like trying to appease people who just want to hunt. He says it's for tourism. He thinks it'll drag people into the area if they can buy a hunting license and, and wander the woods to hunt the mighty, mighty Bigfoot. Dude, that, he's right. I'm sorry. I've just never immediately gotten behind someone's logic like that before. Yeah, like any dumb cunt with like a personalized number plate yep. will immediately be like, I need my Bigfoot hunting license. Yeah. Someone oh, by the way, refer to me as a lord. I bought a plot of land in Scotland, one centimeter by one centimeter. Yeah, <laughs> like right. same shit. Lord Hunter. Whenever, whenever I hear a politician doing something like this, I'm always like, "What mundane thing are they failing at that they've got to <laughs> <laughs> distract us from?" You know, because he's yeah. like, you know, in a while we'll get like a news report: four homeless men die in shelter fire, and he's like. Bigfoot hunting licenses. Let's let's revitalize the tourism industry. How about it, guys? We'll get some people down here. We'll hunt some big feet. <laughs> what, did you lock the door that night? I have not seen a Bigfoot, but I could tell you. Think of the revenue it will bring in. It's unbelievable. Bigfoot hunting season. Progressive taxation's a myth. Anyway, so like, let's just keep going with this Bigfoot idea. I reckon that's the way to do it. Excuse me, um, how contaminated is the town's drinking water? <laughs> could be real, could not. I mean, there's Look, a lot of I've lead seen, from all the bullets that they've been firing into the air. I've seen Bigfoot pissing in the town's <laughs> water supply, so I think we need to take this Bigfoot to, down. Take care of this problem. Mm. It's a urination problem. He, it's, uh, look, the incentive that he's put out is decent. Um, he has... Released, he said, uh, the bill would, like I said, the bill would only allow trapping and not killing. And um, he's offered up a reward for anyone who successfully snags the creature. You want to take a stab at how much he's offering? Or take a shot, I guess. In the thousands. Seven. Pardon? In the thousands. Just In the th yeah, I was going to say seven and a half. Seven and a half? Michael? Right. Um, thousands. Jeez. Well, he, he depends how confident he is. If he's never seen one, he might be like twenty grand. Twenty grand. You want to lock in twenty? Yeah, I'll lock in twenty. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're, you're the closest without going over. If we're doing uh, price of right rules, he offered twenty five thousand dollars for anyone who can successfully catch a Bigfoot, and uh, I guess. Take a photo and release it. Like, offer evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did he come to 25 grand? How did I come to 20 grand? I'm not <laughs> sure. It was your <laughs> first impulse. Your first impulse was like, it yeah. needs to be enough that anyone who's <laughs> dumb enough to buy a license, I guess it becomes yeah. like a lottery at that point because they feel like they're investing in a, in a system that's going to pay out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the real question is like, why do I feel like an idiot for only saying seven and a half? I'm like, what are you fucking idiot? Of course it's more than seven and a half, you dummy. <laughs> yeah, you were like, someone's going to buy custom license plates and drive down with their custom gun that has their yeah. name right down it, Lord Huntington. Seven, seven grand reward, that's like, I don't think Bigfoot are real, but they could be real, maybe. Yeah, I, I could use seven grand, yeah. Fix up the house. A hundred thousand dollars. He's like, no way. Bigfoot are not real. But twenty five grand. He's like, I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, but that's like, like you could take a year off work money and just yeah. go fishing and hunting for a year. See what else like, you can I don't think they are, But if if someone shows up with one, I could sell my car or something. <laughs> Dig myself out of this. We can. <laughs> I think that's him estimating that there'll be precisely $30,000 worth of tourism brought in by a Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Fifty. He's done the math. <laughs> All right. Uh, while we're in the states, here's one for you. The state of Maryland, their highest court has ruled that what could be admitted in court as evidence of a defendant's guilt. There's so many really yeah. inappropriate jokes I want to make with you, it, but I'm not going to like. go. I'm not going to go through it. You know, no, no, no. We're, you suppressed you know. it to a seven thousand dollar guess, and that cost you. So now I'm encouraging you to to put it all out there. State of Maryland. Maryland, yeah. Okay, so the only thing I know about Maryland is Baltimore, and mm. so appearance in the wire. Yeah. So. <laughs> To be honest, like real life was, in that show, when yeah, like, when painting with the broadest, slightly racist brush possible, you're heading in the right direction. Okay. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, what side the ancestors were on in the Civil War? <laughs> That's part of it. <laughs> whether whether they what what review they gave Get Out out of ten on IMDb. <laughs> That's. Oh man, you are coming. Whether whether they say the N word while doing karaoke, is that <laughs> we're going this? I'm, what are we doing? I'm going to give you points for that because it is rap lyrics. They are saying, oh. yeah, they are saying that rap lyrics can be used to determine someone's guilt uh, in a court case. That's nuts. So if they've rapped about it like it's a real thing, yep, dude, that would have killed Kanye West's career. Right. Because he really lied about being hard for a while there <laughs> in the start. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy thing to, to take art and say mm. you are now responsible for anything that is represented in this art. Like, just try and apply that to any other form of art and mm. the prisons are going to be so full. Yeah, that's funny. Just like... Any murderer, like in a film, anyone who just plays yeah, someone yeah. like <laughs> Kevin Spacey's going to jail for seven. I mean, he probably should be in jail, but like, you know, bad example, <laughs> but you know. Uh, what's his face? Yeah. Ben Mendelsohn always plays a villain. He's killed many people. He's going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Multiple life sentences. And Sean Bean's just actually got to go to the grave, you know? He's just yeah. died so many times. <laughs> They're like, well. Him. Just send him off. Stop pretending. Yeah. And get in there. Um, so this comes from oh, nice. comes from a, a 2007 case where uh, a guy uh, a guy called George Forrester was killed, and um, so he was shot by a drug dealer after he attempted to buy cocaine with counterfeit bill. Mm. Now, uh, a man named Lawrence Montague was indicted for the murder, and it was Montague's lyrics that were used as the evidence for his. Uh, for this ruling, for this change in ruling. Where did he record the lyrics? I actually think I've read it. He yeah. recorded it in jail and he recorded the album through his phone. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Yeah. Over the prison phone. And so they've got all the recordings of the calls that all the prisoners make. And so they are using... Is this like three weeks before his trial. They went through all his phone calls looking for any sort of evidence, and they're now using his uh, rap lyrics as a confession. But he, like, because this is fascinating, he rapped through the phone to some other dude on the other end yeah. who's, like, recording it. Yeah. And, you know, the engineer on the other end mixed it into a CD. I mean, that's what we're doing here. I mean, I... Yeah. Okay. You, guys not, you guys not in the slammer? Yeah, I'm, right. I'm in prison. Um, I'm in the, the prison uh, podcast studio and they're just uh, yeah. giving me it for an hour or so. That's why I've got so much free time on my hands. I've just got nothing else to do. Serving my sentence. Mm. I thought albums down the phone was like not uncommon in rap. Like that's kind of been done yeah, a few times. You yeah, know? yeah. It's probably not uncommon, but no one's really like used no one's to been, convicted. Yeah, no one's been convicted. Was he, he in jail? Snoop Dogg's been phoning it in for years. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is important. You're going to like Just wait for it. Wait for it. You're going to like it, guys. Wait, Michael, can you say that punchline one more time, please? Snoop Dogg's been phoning it in for years. 
<laughs> worth it. Totally oh, worth play. it. Oh, play. <laughs> um, I guess if we're if we're arresting artists for the lyrics that they put out, um, what what artists do you want to see punished for their lyrics? Who's going down? Um, Who's your first? A- Ali- Alien Ant Farm, Smooth Criminal. Yes, uh, they're really kind of giving it away there. Michael Jackson, uh, pedophile. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, similar... Man in the Mirror, I believe. Uh, I, was, I was talking to the man in the mirror and I was asking him to change his ways. And uh, yeah. he just didn't. Turned out it was one of those funhouse mirrors and the man was very small. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I'd like to see uh, the corpse of Johnny Cash, the now 13-year mm-hmm. dead corpse of Johnny Cash, be dragged and put on trial for shooting a man in Reno just to see him die. That's true. Yeah. Uh, Nick Cave did an entire album called Murder Ballads. I feel like that's uh, quite indicting. And maybe Modest Mouse. They can be arrested for breaking the laws of thermodynamics with their song Perpetual Motion Machine. <laughs> Doesn't say which laws. <laughs> do, you want me to, do you want me to hit the air horn again or are we good? Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what? If you feel it, if you feel it, do it. But it's fine. Look. You, you can call it. It's your show. That's all right. It's all right. I'll live about it for now. Um, you may have heard this story. This one's been popping up a bit recently. Uh, there was a, a California man who was afraid to fly due to COVID-19, and he took extreme measures to stay safe. What did he do? So he was afraid to fly. He said he was afraid to fly. Mm-hmm. So, to, But because of COVID, not about... Planes crashing, just purely yeah. COVID related. Purely because of COVID, um, yeah, I mean, I've got holes in this for this guy's argument anyway, but we'll, we can talk about it. He learnt to fly a plane, and then flew himself, himself. to the destination. Nice empty plane. Did all the announcements. Did it professionally, yeah. properly. Served his own coffee and tea. Went up the aisles. Had a good time. Yeah. Completely sterile plane environment, all disinfected. Then he landed and went to the uh, airport bathroom. Now, he, upon arrival at um, O'Hare International in Chicago, when he decided he was a. F- this was. Now, this was in October. So this, mm-hmm. we were well into the pandemic at this point. So he flew from California into Chicago, then decided that he was scared, and he lived inside the secure area of the airport for a few months, claiming that he was there afraid of COVID. Oh, so he hid in the airport to avoid people. Yep, to avoid mass groups of people traveling. He hid in one of the busiest areas you could go to, which he flew to in the middle of a pandemic. And he claims he was scared of COVID-19. How long did he manage to live there? Three months. He found an airport security badge and he lived there for three months <laughs> and nobody spotted him. <laughs> Man, a lot of this case hangs on whether or not he sanitized that badge before he started <laughs> using it. <laughs> yeah, if there's any uh, evidence of him cleaning it before he picks it up, does he put on gloves? Like, what is his approach to the badge? Well, I mean, I guess there's more to it. Because, like, how do you think he survived? Like, how do, you, how do you survive three months in an airport? Was he eating out of bins or something? Not far off. He's like, this is disgusting. They're going to be able to keep the virus out. Except for me, they can't keep a fully grown man out of an airport. <laughs> Was he like in the cafeteria with his little badge? Do they have a cafeteria? In my head, they've got a cafeteria. They all hang out there. <laughs> I don't Before doubt they've got a cafeteria, but no, he um, said he survived by taking food that other passengers gave him. Oh. Yeah. See, he asked for food? A lot of holes in this. Yeah, I feel like some people offered it. Apparently, he was taking some that was left over. So his argument is falling apart every time he speaks. But like, his, how, I've never, I don't know if maybe I just seem well fed, but at no point 
Has anyone ever been like, hey, would you like to finish this meal, badge man? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, especially if you were working there, you would assume he's getting a pay of some kind and then he'd be able to mm. afford his own lunch. He's got the security badge, so maybe he's just walking up to people like, you can't take that on the plane. Give me that. <laughs> yeah. uh, this sandwich is banned. We've actually yeah. recalled all this tuna. Not, not that bottle of water. Give us that, you know. I could see that, I guess. Someone was like, hey, man, no chicken on the on the plane. I'm like, oh, yeah, fair enough, bro. I'm like, give him the chicken. It was like, this is a security screening and then, you know, licks the moisture off. <laughs> <laughs> The vibes of the sweat. Super sanitary. Love it. Yeah. Very. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. He's been he's been brought to court and he's been he's like facing trial and, and I guess mm. they're gonna assess his movements and so, surely someone's gonna look at the the footage from in there and and decide whether or not he's telling the truth or if he had deeper intentions if it was darker. <laughs> Is is he getting sued by Tom Hanks for like copywriting? For copyright him? infringement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like that was my movie. I mean, I'm with I'm with Michael. What crime is being committed apart from being really, really, really late to your flight? You know, trespassing just in an this airport. New area. Uh but like. Yeah. What do you mean? Like in the bit where you have to have a ticket, and mm. it's like, well, he has one. He just missed it. He was just long like, time ago. He's just what are you trespassing? Well, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I think I think it would be put, probably put as trespassing. Maybe, maybe if they collected all his uh, instances of taking someone else's food, it'd be like collective theft of some mm-hmm. kind. I don't know. I mean, it was all left behind, presumably. Yeah, maybe impersonating. Like find impersonating an official or something. Yeah, uh-huh. I can't think of a specific. Maybe they'll make a crime for him. <laughs> I can't think of a, a specific law that he's breaking aside like from trespassing. Uh, but I guess yeah. uh, let's, let's move on. Uh, I've only got a couple more questions and then I'll let you guys move on your way. Uh, so Valentine's Day passed not that long ago. Uh, how did one law firm mark the occasion? Uh, offering... Oh, sorry, you, you go, Michael. Discount divorces? That's exactly what I was going to say. God damn it. I was right there. I was well, like, was never, that right? Never give up the answer. Never give up. That's uh, free. He offered one free divorce rather than... Oh. One free divorce. One free divorce. To his wife. <laughs> Bang. There you go. Boy of jokes. Get that air horn. Oh, no, I can't air horn my... I can't air horn myself. There's a code. There's a code to this thing. Man's got to live by a code. Yeah. Um, so how do you get a chance to be the... Uh, the lucky representative, I guess. Like, how do you get a chance to, to win that? You've got to marry him. <laughs> you can marry him. <laughs> With a prenup. I just, I just yeah, think it's like FM prenup. radio. It's like <laughs> FM radio. The sixth caller will get one free divorce. <laughs> the 25,000th caller. Uh, yeah. so you, you've got to be a, a resident of that state, which is Tennessee. But mm-hmm. also, um, not far off on the calling it, it's interested people should email their stories explaining why they deserve the divorce. Right. Look at this motherfucker trying to get laid. What a piece of shit. Right. Just like email it in and be like, why do you deserve a divorce? Oh my God, you deserve to be treated so much better than that. Are you available tonight? We can discuss the terms of the divorce. <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty sleazy behavior. And that's a really horrible way to build up your like client email base as well. To be like, who's yeah. who's looking for a divorce? We'll get you guys in the in the client database. All right, uh, two more questions, and then we'll wrap this one up. So let's, let's go. Do it. The leader of the Taliban has issued a decree urging group leaders and commanders to forego what practice that he claimed was inviting criticism from our enemies. Um. Compulsory QR code check in. <laughs> yeah, whenever you go to the uh, whenever you go to the missile shop, do not mm. scan the QR code. Like, we get it. You're in Russia. You're in the bunker. But like, you got to stop telling the people. Yeah, it just gives you away. It's just it's very mm. irresponsible behavior. Um, pre 
pre-atrocity selfies. Uh, and connected to pre-atrocity selfies with uh, very lame puns in the hashtag. <laughs> Forget the glow up. This is the blow up. That's the hashtag, right? It's good stuff. The one that they've all been using. It's, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like click through and it's like all of them. And you're like, we know where you are. You yeah. got, come on now. Anyone can join the hashtag. <laughs> you want to take a stab, Michael? Or shall I give the answer? Yeah. Breaking uh, COVID capacity restrictions on the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> they did very right. early on, uh, just before I give the answer, they did very early on say, stop. Well, I wasn't Taliban, I don't think. I think it was ISIS. They stopped bombing because of COVID. They were like, stay safe, no bombing for a while. Mm. Like, that was official decree for a bit there, yeah. which put them in a weirdly safer position than most governments at that time. But they were like actually mm -hmm. trying to look after their supporters, their members. Um, they, they also actually gave their supporters free access to ISIS Premium. Yeah, ISIS um, like, kind of you know, get through. The <laughs> um, no, they they said that they should stop taking up the practice of taking multiple wives because it was inviting uh -huh. them from their enemies. Ooh. Like bigamy. Yeah. Worried about bigamy. Yeah. Like of all uh -huh. for them to choose. Yeah. Ah, the <laughs> Taliban blowing up hospitals and schools. I don't mind, but two wives. It's embarrassing for us. <laughs> Polygamy, not on. I mean, I like I like the idea that it's like invited criticism from their enemies and their enemies are their least favorite wives. <laughs> Those are the real enemies. They're really talking some smack. Keep yeah. it in your pants. You're losing focus. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> sister wives are getting together, complaining. It's a, it's a real problem. Mm. So ac according to uh, the local law, Muslim men can be permitted to have up to four wives at a time, and polygamy is actually still legal in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and some of the other predominantly Muslim nations. However, sources said that the Taliban leadership was concerned over allegations of corruption against members for funds to pay a bride price. What is a bride price? Um, the cost of a wedding. Not a bad guess. It's like a, a dowry. The, yeah, like yeah, the dowry. Kind of a... that is, that's exactly what it is. It's basically a different term. For I got an answer right. Yeah, you got oh an answer right. I feel I feel like Michael right now. This is very special, very special for me. This is the worst thing the Taliban's ever done. Yeah, right. <laughs> pretty bad. Very embarrassing. <laughs> Allowing me to be right, it's no good. Yeah, no, and you're not why it. they would be concerned what their enemies think of them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. their big push has been like, get out of our country. We don't want your opinions. We don't want your thoughts here. Why are they worried about looking bad in front of their enemies? I, I'm not. Mm. I, I'm confused by the uh, intention here. Mm. So, well, it's like a high school reunion, isn't it? You want to lose weight. You want to be successful. So get a couple of wives and a couple of wives. <laughs> Everyone you hated in high school, they can just eat it. You're like, oh, I'm so good. I, the, I don't know. My wife. <laughs> yeah, when I walked up to my ten-year high school reunion with three wives, everyone was pretty stoked. Everyone was pretty impressed <laughs> with me. You know. <laughs> so they said because um, you know they're worried about corruption coming from the bride price so they're worried that like someone will bribe I guess an, uh, an official or someone else to through the, the, the paying of the bride price and that they, they will take on more wives than they can afford to take on and that's the major concern with the um, the polygamy is that they'll marry more wives than they can afford. Mm. So they're not saying to, that it should stop altogether. They're grandfathering in people who already have multiple wives and they're saying uh, they're endorsing multiple marriages for uh, men with like men who have no children or have no male children from a previous marriage who are marrying a widow which is nice of them, and mm. uh, 
who have family wealth to afford multiple wives. Those are like all the official allowances under the... Mm. This isn't so much anti-polygamy. This is more like pro-financial planning. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I never, I never would have thought the old terrorist was big on the financial planning. I thought there wouldn't be many more carefree positions than a terrorist signing a mortgage. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I guess like I- twenty years, sure, whatever. People going into comedy, they go into it thinking that it's going to alleviate them of responsibilities, but then they find that there's all these uh, hidden expenses on top, traveling around and having to plan mm-hmm. things in advance and all this sort of stuff. And these guys are just like, ah. Oh, I didn't know what I was signing up for. I thought I was just mm. going to live life on the road, wander around, be a free man. Now I've got four or five wives I can't afford. It's a tough life. The old terrorist. Imagine going up to one of your wives and being like, I'm sorry, I just can't afford you. Like, what a... I still love you. Yes, I still love you. I just can't afford yeah. to love you. Like a like a like a like a Australian with a jet ski, you know? It's just like I just can't. I'd love to. I'd love to have a jet ski, but I just don't have the money. Oh, I'm just gonna have to stick with wife number one, boat number two. Yeah, no jet ski. Mind, uh, blowing up historic monuments and bombing <laughs> American outposts doesn't pay like I thought it would. It's yeah, really, like embarrassingly low wages, you know. I showed up at my 10-year reunion and I was like, oh, you're still slaving away at terrorist level, huh? I thought you would have gone up into management by now. Like, mm. uh, Dude, masterminds make, what, like 200 before tax? They're good, man. They're on top. Yeah, exactly. They've got it. They've got to sort it sorted out. They've got minions. Mm. They've got people under them to, to do all the bombing. It's, I mean, you've mm. got to get in. You've got to get in where you can. Uh, all right, last question and then you know, <laughs> we're all done. I'll get you guys out of here. So we'll move over to Tokyo. Uh, So, a 37-year-old Tokyo man says he rents himself out to other people. He has been inundated with gratitude from Twitter users. What is the service that he is renting himself out for? Does he read their Twitter? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, respond. You don't want to hear that one. You don't want to hear that one. (laughs) Um, Like, okay... Just, I, I just reckoned, I, I reckon just the f- friend, just a straight up friend. Like, it's just like, he just goes somewhere with you. Like, it's just a companion, no sexual anything. He just turns up and hangs yeah. out. It is, he's listed specifically to do nothing. Mm. Um, so, he says he can eat, drink, give simple feedback, but do nothing more. But with you. Yeah, with you. All right. He's not just doing that separately. And you're like, how was your night? Yeah, pretty good. I'll just call him up and be like, can you just go down to my brother's party, eat, drink, give simple feedback, and do nothing more? Yeah, perfect. I would would hire that guy for my dad any day of the week. (laughs) Just the sheer amount of phone calls that would save me. Fucking sign me up. Listen and nod and be like, you are right. Your son is failing. Yeah. Is, it, is, it a, is it a companion for elderly people? or Just anyone. Or... Anyone who wants to hire him. Yeah. This, this, might, this might be like me, you know, having watched Lost in Translation and not really knowing this to be true. <laughs> but I do have an understanding that there's like a loneliness epidemic in Japan. Yeah. yeah there That's is, like a thing. There's a, a, that sounds weird. The most aging populations in the world. They've got more, yeah. more centurions than anywhere else. And there is also a steady decline of people having babies. And apparently the work culture is really like destructive to dating and to meeting up and finding someone. Mm. It's like, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Like the, the terrorists keep taking all their wives. Yeah, it's not right. good. Going over there, picking out a few Japanese wives, taking them back. Then they find out mm. they can't afford them. They're used to a certain lifestyle. Yeah. But yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. But that's fucking good job. Yeah, you right. I, Talk I mean, I wouldn't do it. That's the funny thing. I would absolutely not do that. That sounds like my worst fucking nightmare. Yeah, just but, hanging out with someone. And just not be like, hey, how you going? And like not being allowed to like contradict when they say something stupid. Yeah. And just having to carry like the, just carry the flow of them complaining and being like, yes, you're right. You know what? You're right. 
She is stupid. Karen is dumb. You reckon we can get that guy for our fringe shows to just really fill him out? Just about That'd like 40, 40 to 70 of those a night? Just well, give simple feedback. Ha ha. And like, fuck, this is great. Best fringe ever. This is he's good. A busy, he's a busy dude. Um, yeah. He, he takes a lot of requests. Uh, could be a lot less than marketing. Right. <laughs> Bring all these flies and stuff. Like. So here's, here's my next two questions. How many times do you think he's done it? And how much roughly... Um, we, because he obviously he charges in yen, so we'll do it, do it in dollars, and mm. I can tell you roughly what the dollar amount is. So, how many requests do you think he's fulfilled, and how much do you think right. he charges for an appearance? Michael, because you won last time, you can lead this time. What do you reckon? <laughs> I reckon I reckon I'll get a lot. So I reckon he's done like a hundred, hundred requests, and, and twenty bucks an hour. Twenty bucks an hour. Okay. All right, I'm going. I'm going way more. I'm going like he's done like five, five hundred. He's done fucking heaps. Like he's busy. He's like every day this man is booked. Yeah, it's been years. And how much? I'm gonna say it's like a hundred an hour or something, something like that. All right, like a lot of money. So, um, you guys have come in at, at very different ends to your last mm-hmm. numbers. So he has done over three thousand requests. Whoa. Yeah, hates. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a busy man. I don't know if you'd be able to get him for your fringe show. You have to book yeah. well in advance and maybe fly him over. Uh, and he charges, yeah. not by the hour, he charges $96 per, per request, which is uh, about 10,000 yen per request. Wow. So, I don't know How what. Long yeah, I don't know. For? I'm not sure what yeah. the length of a request is. Is? Surely you should vary it based on the length of a request. Mm. Like that's crazy. If it's like thirty minutes or eight hours, a hundred, like ten thousand yen, baby. Yeah, which I don't know. Maybe that's why he's so popular. He's got some mm. some feedback here. A um, couple of quotes from him from customers. He said, "One said, I'm glad he was able to walk. No, I'm glad I was able to walk with someone while keeping a comfortable distance, where we didn't have to talk, but could if we wanted to. That's the whole." Nice. Feedback. Good. And yeah. the one is I've I had been slack about visiting the hospital, but I went because he came with me. So he's like in the room visiting like a dying parent. Yep. He's just sitting there like Yep. Just being How like you going? you're a good son, you're doing well. Ninety six. Fucking love place. this guy. <laughs> yeah, I think it's quite clever. It's a it's a very uh industrious way to like use your time and to Fill a a cultural need. Mm. Not bad. Full props to him. I mean, at one point, I yeah, you know, I guess we should um put a podcast together and just hire him to be in the Zoom box and just give gentle feedback. See how he goes. That was an interesting story. I like the jokes they made. <laughs> you did well. Going. You did very good. Yeah. Oh no, very good cool. might be too too much. Yeah. Uh, and I guess uh, just to finish off, what do you what do you want to hire him for? Let's say we're going to hire him. What are we What are we going to do? Um, ninety six dollars. What's ninety six dollars of your money worth? I reckon I reckon artist bar at fringe shows, and he's he's there to say these three things in this order. Yep, not bad. And about twenty a night. That's it. That's those are the three questions. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed the fringe bar experience. For anyone who's wondering what the uh, the wildlife of a fringe artist is, that is those those three questions <laughs> in a nutshell. Are you doing a show? How's it going? How many are you getting? That's it. Those are the questions, and they're fucking <laughs> tedious. Um, what about you, Michael? What are you gonna hire him for? Uh, whenever my my parents are coming to visit in a little while, and they always uh, refrain from talking, asking personal questions when there's a stranger in the room. So basically, <laughs> I just have a social buffer. You keep it very quiet, very surface level. Yeah. They wouldn't get into any questions about you know, oh, how's your career going or anything. Mum's going to avoid those topics. <laughs> Nice. That is smart. That yeah. is good. Uh, it's a it's a good um, like social chess move. I like it. That's really yeah. well played. Yeah. Well, I think because um, you like Daniel, you did well towards the end there. You started breaking out and finding 
your stride and finding some answers. But I think because of his early streak on platypus knowledge, I think Michael just edged over into victory on this one. So I'd like to congratulate you, Michael. Connell. Very much. Who played? Uh, I, I feel touched that I won, but I also think I don't believe you counted at any point during the show. No, you don't think so? Oh, I'm hurt you by your accusation. <laughs> Quite frankly. I'll take that win. That's all I need. Yeah. Take that sweet win. I will never do the show again. That's it. <laughs> if I've lost, I'm out. I do not I'm take out. losing well. One in time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you guys want to give a shout out, because you, you're both doing fringe shows. I know that much. Yep. It's the Platypus Hour uh, on NPR. <laughs> <No. laughs> that explains a lot. That's how you. <laughs> my show's called uh, No Hablo Bebe. It's about my efforts to teach my two year old daughter Spanish. A language I don't speak yet. Um, it's on at Rhino Room uh, in the last two weeks of the Adelaide Fringe. Nice. Uh, what time? Uh, 6.15. 6.15. Cool. Um, uh, my, my show is called Oh, More Mr. White Guy. Uh, and it's on at 9.30 at uh, The Piglet in Gluttony, which is an open-air venue which is way too close to busking for me, but I've made I've made my choice, and now I'm stuck with it. Um, it's on at 9:30 p.m. and uh, from the hours of 10 a.m. through 6:30 p.m., I will be offering my services at $96 per request <laughs> to sit there and be like, "You look stupid in that. Don't buy it. Your life is meaningless." Uh, it'll be good. But I'll be wearing the tracksuit so people will be like, fuck, this guy's kind of fun. I don't know. <laughs> the only way to, to make any money in a festival is to hire yourself out as a consultant for people. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Well, uh, I, I still have a digital version of my show happening because I, I couldn't get into Adelaide because of the quarantine rules. Um, so, but I'll be doing comedy festival uh, if people uh, remember that far in advance. It's only a month away. But um, I've got a storytelling show. It's called I Got Beat by a Monkey Once. And I'll uh, do a couple more of these um, in the comedy festival, but also might try and sneak one in before then. So if you enjoyed this, come back and check it out. And um, please check out my guest shows because they uh, very generously come and give me their time. And uh, I would have gone to see their shows, but obviously I can't make it that far. Uh, but thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, the audience, for listening. And, uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I was going to say I'll see you around the fringe, but maybe I'll see you at Comedy Festival. Who knows? Yeah, see you there. I'll be around. Bye. Bye. Cool. Catch you later.